So the first part I would like to discuss with you, just to quickly recap that that the NDC band combination or categorization combination. First, how how you can read it from the 3GBB tables, and second, how to how you can read it also from the e capability logs. For example, here in this 3GBB. Um, table as you can see here this one is showing the indc band combination for example here you have dc dual connectivity 1a 3a and n3a and this table is representing whenever you have three bands supported by the device and in the 3gbb you will find also two bands four bands five bands even up to six bands but i just give samples from three and four so example this is for indc configuration for downlink so you have 1a 3a this is means you have two carriers for 4g band one and band three then you have n three so you have n3 as well supporting by the 5g as well so here you have three carriers and here for the four carriers for the for the four carriers part you have 1a 3a and this is means you have two carriers for 4g and then you have n3 and n41 which is mean you have two carriers for for, for nr so this is how you can read it as you can see here if you don't have anything like for example n this means n for uh, 5g if it's and it would be always separated by dash if it's like within the nr for example this is within the NR. and underscore if it's between 4g and 5g this is how you can read the band combination from the 3gbb documents now in the right figure here as you can see here this is from the u capability logs for example i open this message which is called uemrdc capability nr this is during 5g non-standalone after this message you'll find this kind of nr parameters under tariff parameters mrdc then you'll find the band combination is being supported here. Usually you find it like this, band utran, for example. Here is showing as one. This is mean this is band one, first one. A, A means it's only single carrier. This is the class, class is like telling you, for example, how many carriers you have, one, two, contiguous, one, contiguous, and so on. I have one video in details about that part also. You can refer to this video. Then here showing this is the first band, which is the anchor, band one. Then you have a second carrier for the uh, 4G which is band three. And also this is again showing as A, this means it's only one carrier. So far you have two carriers. Then here you have addition carriers, which is 41, band 41, but this time it's C, C means it's two carriers. So in this case, you have four carriers in 4G. And if you're going to 5G, you have only one carrier, which is N77, A. So now you have as a total four LTE carrier components plus one in our carry component. So this particular device supporting up to five five carry component, component one for four for Fuji and one for NR. And this is just showing the exact sum for me as you This is important to understand, but the most important point, try to look into these tables because sometimes you just need to know for your reference. For example, if you have different frequencies in the network, you need to confirm which one is being supported by 3GBB as a band combination. So let's move forward for the next part. So the second part here, actually, we are going to discuss a very important concept. It's about something called operating bands and MFPI feature. What it means by operating band? In the normal case scenario, there is a one-to-one -one relationship between the frequency spectrum or the spectrum. For example, if you have, let's assume your network, you have a band from 4,100 till 4,200. So it, this is means it's directly means this is M77. So this is whenever this is a normal case scenario. Most of the, the scenarios like this, you have one-to-one -one relationship between the frequency spectrum and the frequency band. So one spectrum it would be having only one in, in R. But in some cases, as showing here, for example, N77 starting from 3,300 till 3,800, it's overlapping with N78 within the same band, right? Same for N2 from 1850 till 1910, overlapping with N25. So this mean, means in, in whenever you have, for example, assume current network, you have 3,200 to 3,400. This means you can even configure this particular frequency a spectrum as N77 or N78. So what is the trick or what is the way around here? Actually, the main challenge is here that let's think about from two, two different perspectives. The first one that some devices might support N77, not support N78 and the opposite way around. Some, for example, as showing in the bottom down here, if you look, this is the NDC supporting maximum band combination. For example, interband two bands, you'll find that N77 supporting more band combination compared to N78. This is supporting up to 96 different band combination and supporting up to 88 different band combination. So in this case, sometimes you'll find that you might having a less speed or even cannot access because you'd have a less combination if you, if you configured yourself as N78. 
So now it's it's two different things. First, can aggregation and also can impact the initial access. So how you can solve this situation? Actually, there is a feature called MFPI, which is in, stands for Multi Frequency Band Indicator. And this feature works in, in, in terms of, of accessibility point of view or even during the carry aggregation or in DC. So how, how this feature is working. Assume now you have a device, which is this device, particular device, only supporting N78. And this device only supporting N77. So in this case, you need to configure both frequencies to the, the within the site using this feature. This feature can can configure both frequencies. And whenever the user is initial access, if you are speaking about the standalone here as an example, or 4G, same also concept. This the in, within the SIP one the will drive the system information block type one with both frequencies frequency band. For example, assume that here we have this scenario in N2 and N25. We'll find that under the SIP one message, it's delivering both N25 and N2. So if you have one device not supporting N25, he will just access to N2. And if he's not supporting N2, he will just access to N25. And he's supporting both of them, he will take the one with highest priority because this feature also defines a priority between both of them. So this is in case of initial access. The same information can be delivered in the 5G non-standalone under this NDC X2 setup response. Whenever you have NDC X2 setup response, you will find that this also information being delivered for the NR frequency. This is actually how it can be solved. And in case, for example, you have a carry aggregation combination, for example, let's say N77 and N78, still the user will be able also to read, for example, let's assume that you have one, two frequency bands in your network, for example, one for N7 and one, N77 and one for N78, and you are configuring this one from uh, you have this from 37500 to 3.6 or 3.3 to 3.4 so the mfpi will let the user read both of them for example let's assume both of them as n77 so if the user of the category only supporting n77 plus n77 in this case the users can enjoy the services of the category or even for the initial access this is a very important feature i didn't try it in, in 5g yet but I have tried in 4G and it's I have observed a very good increase in the calculation users. And when we tried this feature, it was between band 38 and 141. This is in 4G. So this is just an example for your reference. So now let's move to the last concept about the, the NR operating band, which is related to subliminary downlink and subliminary uplink. See what we can get from that spot. Okay. Now for the supplementary downlink and supplementary uplink. What means by this? This means that some particular frequencies are showing the bottom right here. For example, I give a sample from N8 and N29. I will just also show you the complete combination which you have it in the, from 3GBB. I will show you the complete band list. But for example, assuming this part, this means this frequency only in A80 can only be used for uplink. And this one can be used only for downlink. For example, this one overlapping with one of the 1800 band, it's okay. But this one, it's just for the SDL. For SDL supplementary downlink, this is, can be used for carry aggregation only. For example, this is, can be configured if, if the user, the operator, for example, purchase one of these carriers, he can configure it to be used only as a, as a carry aggregation. So it can be used as a capacity wise to offload the the any of the existing sites through configuring this carry as as a calculation. So this is a use case of the SDL. You find I have seen some networks already being used that in 4G, I, not yet in 5G, but I have seen some network having some carriers which is only supporting SDL downlink. So this can be used only for calculation, no any other case use cases. For the SUL, actually, this is very very useful, especially for the current scenario for the. As you know that NR, especially if you're speaking about the C-band, if you look into this figure in the left here, this is uh, showing the, the coverage or the red one. This is for band N78. So you can see that downlink coverage can reach from till, till here, till the edge. While doubling coverage is only reaching till this black circle, as you can see here, this is the maximum. So you have a limitation in the uplink coverage. So in this case, even, even your downlink coverage is extending till here. But you cannot enjoy this particular area because of the limitation of doubling. Because as you know, all the feedbacks and need the uplink coverage. So in this case, for example, if you have existing SUL network or carriers from the 4G can be used as SUL. In this case, you can configure this carrier as SUL. So it can working as a supplementary for this particular N78. So the uplink will be through the SUL and downlink will be through the N78. So in this case, you extend the coverage as, for example, showing in the right figure here. 
the right figure here is showing that example for C band. I have a C band here, and I have the 4G. I have used the uplink of the 4G to be utilized as an R1800 band as an R uplink bank, uplink. So in this case, the coverage before was being limited till here only. Now I can extend it by this far because of the supported of the uplink here. So I can extend it up to this particular range whenever I'm using. And this is called the feature called uplink downlink decoupling. I, I believe you might be aware about it. So now let me quickly show you the complete band combination, which you have it also. And the band combination and what kind of bands currently support ZL and ZL from the CGBB table. Okay, as, as you can see in this table, this is from the CGBB. As you can see here, you have this is a supporting uplink band and this is downlink band. And you have here double smooth. So if I filter here, I can just filter on SDL and DSL, for example, those two. You'll find that this is all the current combination which you have it supporting either uplink or downlink. For example, only these three carriers supporting is, uh, downlink. And all of these carriers supporting uplink. Whenever you see this eight comment or a comment, for example, in one of these carriers, this means you look into need to look into nodes. For example, here giving a node eight. So this means N95 is mentioning that this is only applicable in China. So this is not applicable in any other country. So this is an example. The second part, which is very, very important as well from 3GBB table as well. If you look into this part, this is the current uh, combination. For example, assume that you you have N78. So, and you have other 4G carriers, which you would like to use it as a supplementary uplink for the, for the 5G. So in this case, you need to look in 3 gb table to confirm which band is being supported by which band. For example, this one, the combination between N78 and N80. N80 is for 1800. And for example, this is between N78 and N81. N81, for example, this is for 900 band or 800 band. And the same for N82 and so on. So this is also one of the important points and I will attach this sheet also in the video description. Before jumping to the, the important uh, concept, I would like just to take with you just a quick recap of how to verify the or how to check the, uh, the current bandos or information about your bandos for non-standalone whenever you need, for example, to compare one side to another or between different operators and so on, how you can do that from the DT logs. First, the table on the left here is just bringing a sample from the, the all the supporting band for NR. As you know, that is as we speak in the previous session for the in our slot, we have this different duplex mode of the DTDD, and we have even half duplex FDD. And also, there is another uh, duplex called this UL and this SDL, supplementary uplink and downlink. And this will be explaining details. And I will attach one table in the video description, which is covering all the bands of the NR. And here, this is just supporting band, for example, bear, bear SCS, just to give you for information. And this is only for FR1. So, in, in the figure on the right here, as we discussed before in the explicit session, as you can see here, this is how you can check the current uh, NR band, for example, and the band is supported. Under the RS3 configuration message during the SGNB edition, you'll find under this message, on search for SP cell, secondary primary cell configuration. Uh, under that part, you'll find frequency information downlink. Under this, you'll find the SSP location or frequency and the frequency band indicator, which is N78 here, for example, and here is the bandwidth, and here is our carrier case, spacing. So this is how you can verify. 